I didn't get elected into my position because of the color of my skin or doing any, any race baiting stuff that it seems like you're promoting here. Oh, I promote race, baby. Hey, what's up, you all? Welcome back. I am Van, and we are all the LFR family. Thank you so much for clicking play. I appreciate every single last one of you. Hopefully, you click that like button as well if you enjoy what you're actually watching, okay? And if you have any other stories that you'd like for me to check out, feel free to join me either on Twitch. Now, this right here is what's wrong with the country, okay? Because everybody's fed up in their own right for whatever reasons that they're fed up for, okay? I'm not trying to tell anybody that what you're upset about you shouldn't be upset about it who am i to do that i'm not god you know what i mean but i do know that we can move forward if we just uh, work together and stop trying to push people um or stop trying to bait people especially with race all right because that's happening way too much it's almost like they are someone's trying to ignite a race war i'm not trying to scare anybody i'm just saying what i see i'm just I observe things and I'm just telling you what I observe. This right here is going to show somebody actually get embarrassed for trying to race bait in a situation where it's not even called for. Can I ask you what you identify as? Identify? Eth eth ethnicity. I ethnicity. Ethnicity. Can I ask you what you identify as? Ethnicity. Okay. I'm not even going to jump on you for your... Um, <laughs> for your verbal um, vernacular or anything like that because I'm not the most grammatically correct person in the world either, okay? But I do know that ethnicity is not a word, okay? If you meant ethnicity, then cool. Identify? Eth eth ethnicity. ethnicity. I identify as an American. Not uh, an African-American. Yeah, there you go. You see that? You see, how he's, you see how he just answered that? Like, I identify as an American. Can we move forward? Is she like not not an African American? Uh, uh, Are you African American? I didn't get elected into my position because of the color of my skin, or doing any any race baiting stuff that it seems like you're promoting here. Oh, I, I'm promoting race baiting. I'm promoting race baiting. Yes, you are, baby. You ain't even got to say it twice. Yes, yes, you are. No, I think you're promoting privilege, tokenism. Gentlemen from St. Charles County, you have been inquired of by the lady from St. Louis County, Terry District. Do you yield? I do. Please proceed. Right. Afternoon, gentlemen. I inquired of you because I heard you say that there is equality, equal. You agree with this DEI bill? And what was your reason for what? Can you repeat that? I'm sorry, can you, can you rephrase your question? You said you were okay with the DEI and that there's an equal playing field. Did, did you say that? Yes, I, I did say that I'm okay with the uh, bill as it stands currently. And to address that there and to talk a little bit about it, it's because what it does is say that we're not in the business in state government of giving preferential treatment to certain groups and, and individuals. We, we treat everybody the same because we're all people under the law. And this is, it's the same concept as the, the 14th Amendment, for instance. Everybody was supposed to be equal and everything like that. But what, what, what essentially your, your argument's likely going to be here is that, no, it's not. It's, nobody's equal and everything. And that's what it seems like you're probably trying to get at. If you, if my understanding is. First of all, you said suppose, use the word suppose. And so suppose means not exactly. Can I ask you what you identify as? So he said, um, basically the way you're coming at me, I already know where your argument is going to be. All right. Now we are all supposed to be equal. The reason why he says suppose is because there are still some bad apples out there. It's <laughs> It's some bad apples out there who just want things to work the way that they want things to work. And guess what? Those bad apples are not only white. <laughs> They're not. They're not. Some of those bad apples are yellow. They prefer other yellows. Some of those bad apples are whites. They prefer other whites. Some of those bad apples are blacks. They prefer nothing but other blacks. Some of those bad apples are brown. They prefer nothing but other browns. You feel me? This is where we're going. All right. So but we can only do what we can do. Now, once you change your mindset and stop being a victim, then you realize that you are on equal 
playing ground. You you can do what anyone else can do. That's why you're standing here right now. You're standing here right now commanding an audience, speaking up as a professional, but you you still choose to have a victim mentality. We understand that things go on with many different racial groups all the time. And a lot of times we inflict these issues on ourselves. All right. When you talk about black on black crime, that's usually because people who are in close vicinity commit crime against each other. The same way as is black on black crime is white on white crime is natives on native crime is Mexican on Mexican crime. Asians on Asian. It's the same thing all around the board. But as soon as we decide to take responsibility for ourselves and just move forward, just move forward. We will understand that, yeah, it's pretty equal out here. Identify? Ethnic, eth- ethnicity. I identify as an American. <laughs> Not uh, an African-American? Uh, Are you African-American? Ladies and gentlemen, I will remind the body the remain poised with the quorum. There will be no celebrations. I'm, I'm, I'm glad he actually said that. No, I'm not. Because why can't they have a celebration? Like, let the guy know that what you, the way you answered that, that was nice. Uh, we appreciate that. Like, that right there was, was nice. That's somebody that we want to work with. Somebody that is not trying to separate and not trying to cause any issues. Let's just move forward. I probably have a daughter your age. And when you made that statement, I was a, a little appalled because there is no equality as of yet. You know, some people have privileges and, you know, we can consider maybe privileges that people have, and you you may be getting that confused with equal, but my daughter don't have those privileges. Your daughter most certainly does have those privileges. Your daughter has the same, the privileges that, the things that you and your husband if you're if you're married or just say you the things that you worked hard for to make sure that your daughter could receive a certain level of education, a certain level of protection. She can live in a certain community where she don't have to worry about bullets flying all over the place. Trust me, your daughter does have a privilege that you earned for your daughter. Do you not understand that? But what you want to do is say, you know what? No, we are still down. We are still in the trenches. We still in the darkness. We can't make any moves without your say so. Everywhere we go, we got to look over our shoulders and hope that we are not murdered by the police or by the white man who has all the privilege, by the white woman who has all the privilege. Check this out, sweetie. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm that's just my wife been telling me stop talking to women like that. That's just me being respectful, to be honest with you. I'm not trying to demean or anything. But what I will say is this. Just because you have a black man or just because you have a man with some melanin in his skin and he does not think like you he may not even talk like you does not mean that he is less than you one thing that you're trying to do and this is something that we do all the time to each other and this is effed up i'm not going to cuss because i'm not going to be the angry black man in this video today Uh, one thing we do to each other is we try to demean other black people for not um having the same way of thinking as us so what do you mean is equal brother you call yourself a brother you ain't no brother you just a token and you're sold out to the man so you're gonna talk like them you're gonna move like them you're gonna relate like them you're gonna reason like them you're gonna take up for them and if i do anything more than likely you're gonna snitch on me because you're nothing but a house slave and i'm out there in the field that's how we act man grow the hell up I was elected to my first office in 1999 in a 95% African-American school district where the entire board was white. 1999, sir. Do you think that's equal? And our school district was 95% African-American? It took me 20 years sir, to get into this building. And I had to fight to get here. Think that- Listen, 
95% of the NBA are black. 90% of the NFL is black. Uh, what's your point? <laughs> what's your point? There are certain um <laughs> there are certain occupations that are um that are um that that people find interesting enough to be a part of and if there aren't a whole slew of black people trying to be in this industry, trying to be in this occupation, and they're not going to be there. But guess what? When you're working for the federal government in different parts of the federal government, there are like a great number <laughs> of certain races in certain groups of, of, of places. But the fact you will point that out and just say, I have been trying to get here for 20 years. So I, 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 young lady, that's your move. That's what you wanted to do. That's, that's, that's your field. You can't say, come on now, relax. It's not, it don't, life doesn't work that way. That's equal. I think that you're given the same opportunity as anyone else in this building to get there. Well, it's just, it's just, it's just as me. You I've are delusional. Fight. If you think that. So here's the thing. You don't just start calling people names because they don't agree with you. That is not. See, now I understand why it took you that long to get there. You're not professional. You're speaking to another colleague, another professional young man that earned his position. He earned where he is right now. He bust his tail in school. He has to walk through the same streets that you walk through. But you just now going to call this man delusional and you don't even know him. Because that's not so that's not that's not how life is going. That's the reason why we need these things implemented in some of these companies, because there is not. How do you think it all came about, sir? It's not like that. We talk about transportation. Back in the day, Rosa Parks couldn't even, she had to ride in the back of the bus. Okay, now we're going to bring up civil rights. We're going to bring up slavery. We're going to bring up this. We're going to bring up all of our hardships. Yes, let's bring up all of our hardships. Four, five, six hundred years ago, black people were enslaved. White people were enslaved. Natives were enslaved. Africans were selling us to, um, to the French, to, to, um, to, to, to Europeans, to, come on, it's many things that is, we can go down a long a litany of things that have happened to many nations. We don't even have to keep it with the Americans or with Africa or with Europe. We can go to Asia. We could talk about the fact that there's still slavery in many parts of the world right now. Where are you going with this? Yes, people have worked hard so things can get better for everyone. But as long as you try to acknowledge the worst of times, your times will remain exactly where they are because your mind is set on just your mind is fixed on making sure that you have a certain um, a certain um, bit of real estate inside of your head that's separated, separated just for hardships, separated just for bad times. You want to make sure that I never forget this. That's why it took you so long to get your position right now. I'm listening to you speak. I would not have hired you. I wouldn't have hired you if that's how you came up in my building wanting today going to work for me. You wouldn't have gotten the job. It would have taken you 30 years to get into the building messing with me because you're not trying to play along with the team. You're not, you're not a team player. And in order for any, any of us to win, we have to, we have to come together as a team. Fair does not exist. I've been teaching my kids this all their lives. When I walked in this building, when I got elected to come into this building, I came into this building thinking that I was gonna work with individuals for the state of Missouri. I was so proud. It didn't matter what color we were. I just wanted to work with individuals to make a better state. And that has not happened. That's not equal, sir. That's not equal at all. I have some darn good bills. When I walked into the office of the speaker, they were made out of a joke. Good educational bill. I love children. All children. And I got good bills for those children. You love children if they do not have, quote unquote, alleged privilege that you have clearly pointed out. How can you sit here and say, I love all children 
but you won't even acknowledge that all the people in the building are equal to one another. So clearly you're only looking out for the children that you feel like you want to look out for. And when people see that, that tells them that you are leaning one way and you're not considering everyone involved. Um, I, listen, I'm trying to understand exactly what this young lady is saying, but it's very difficult to do when, um, when she's saying, I got great bills and they're not even acknowledging these bills. That's because of you, your character, your integrity, where you're coming from. What are your bills? What does your bills entail? Do they only um, positive, positively affect one certain group, one group? Or do you call yourself being, an, um, being a civil rights um, leader as well, where you're only looking out for this one group because you feel like they don't have a fair shake? I sit on the education committee and none of my bills in three years, the same bills have yet to be heard. Anything I ask for, I have to Beg for it. I applaud the young people on this side. All of them. They're very well educated. They're smart. They remind me a lot of them of myself. They have the energy that I had. But one thing I still got is the fight in me. But we have to fight for everything over here. We have to be humiliated every day. I had to take a walk to gather myself, to come back in here and continue with this, to be rushed out of the building. I'm hearing so people can go to a ball game. Well, the heck with that, because we're here representing the state of Missouri and we need to stay here until our work is done. Today, I want you to, I wish you could meet my daughter since you say it's equal and she has a master's degree. I'd be happy to and, talk to your daughter. Yeah, I'm going to introduce you to my daughter, and I'm going to let you let her tell you how it's not equal on her job that she has a master's degree, and she has to work for individuals that don't have the same education that she has, merely because she looks like me. That's not equal. And that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about, man. Listen. <laughs> Take your ball and go home. If you if you're not if you can't put on your big boy pants, your big girl pants, and play the game to win, um, and actually use your equal rights in order to up your standing, up your stance, um, to 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 be able to inspire and encourage those who can vote for you, then you're in the wrong business, and so is your daughter. Unfortunately, unfortunately, if and I understand if my if, if your daughter is anything like you, you did nothing but complain the entire time you was there. The entire time is you're doing nothing but complaining. Nothing but who's going to vote for you? Who's who's going to vote for that? Anything that you push forward is going to come with that spirit of you. <laughs> all it, it's going to be all through it. Sometimes when people are so privileged. They want to think that equality and privilege is equal. It's not. I wonder what did it take for you, sir, to get elected out of St. Charles to sit in your seat? I want to hear that story. Yeah, I had to uh, work on my own merits and uh, pretty much promote the principles I believe in, which is freedom, equality for all, which I believe that America does. And that's how I got elected into my position. I didn't get elected into my position because of the color of my skin or doing any, any race baiting stuff that it seems like you're promoting here. Oh, I'm promoting race baiting? I'm promoting race baiting? Yes. Let the man talk because he, just, he sat there and listened to you complain and moan and groan for the last five minutes. And he didn't say anything until you asked him a question. <laughs> Until he asked, until you asked him a question, that's the only time he started talking. And then when he said something that hit you in a in in, in a spot, let me tell you something. You went off. Let the man talk. No, I think you're promoting privilege, tokenism. I didn't. I didn't come from a privileged background. Oh, really? I, I grew up in St. Louis where, County, where where my mother. Where did you grow up at? Tell Overland, me that. In in Overland is where I grew up. <laughs> 
and over and wasn't a wasn't a uh, uh, privileged family at all. Uh, my father passed when I was twelve. My mom raised me and three uh, two of my other brothers. Uh, she was lower lower income. I had to work my butt off to get where I am today and to shame our youth. Lady, you're you know, and this is the thing right here. The fact that dude, man, wh why do we have to compare um, victim victimhood? Oh, I gotta compare my my growing up to yours. Was it as tough as yours? Did I have my mother and my father? Was I living on food stamps? Did I get shot at on the way and and from school? Is that what you want to hear? Because you're not believing it regardless. No matter what I say, she's talking about how did you get your position at such a young age? You must have sold out. Huh? That's what you must have done. Nah, cuz said, no, I worked hard. And I know how to play the game. I know what I'm doing. You can probably learn something. I got here very fast. And you're talking down to me as if I'm beneath you. Make that make sense. She's like, oh, where you grow up? <laughs> oh, really? You, like, you ain't come from a nice neighborhood? The neighborhood you just now named, they got windows in their houses. My house had no windows. As a matter of fact, it had no doors. It had no refrigerator and no oven. It had no steps. It had no beds. It had no floors. It had no roof. That's where I grew up. And that's where my daughters are growing up right now. Because I want them to know that they ain't got no privilege. I told them they don't need no jobs. Just ask the government for some assistance because they owe us reparations. What about 1619? That's the problem right there. That's that ignorant mentality that, that crosses over and passes over from generation to generation to generation to generation. All because she believed that that's what Rosa Parks wanted. That's not what Rosa Parks wanted at all. Rosa Parks wanted to be able to drink from the same fountain. Rosa Parks wanted to be able to drive on the same bus, ride on the same bus, and be able to sit down in the in a seat when wherever she can be comfortable. We pretty much do that now, don't we? No. Okay. If if the answer is no to that, then <laughs> listen. Everything I said is hogwash. It's poppycock. It's baloney. But well, since that's not the case, it's not.